is on the verses that I'm focusing in on. Won't you stand and turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 1 as we take a look at the story of Christmas through the eyes of Joseph. Matthew chapter 1, beginning with verse 18 says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, to make her example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. I want to return to that 18th verse where it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed or engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Spirit. And I want to talk about divine interruptions. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your awesome spirit. Come now and favor me to preach your word, your way to your people. According to your will, save, heal, deliver today through your word, through your Holy Spirit. Come now and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like all day I have been experiencing some forms of interruption. And I have learned when it comes to interruptions that interruptions are bad for folks like me who suffers with some form of ADD, or who suffers forms of staying on track to get easily distracted. We don't like interruptions because we understand that interruption slows the progress of us getting where we're trying to get to. And when you have a goal in mind, you want to get your goal achieved as fast or as soon and as good as possible. And those of us who are easily distracted, we understand that we don't have time to play games and we don't have time to talk to everybody about everything because we have a bigger picture in mind. And consequently, while we're trying to stay focused, sometimes we can seem cold. Sometimes we can seem antisocial. We can seem like we don't want to be bothered with you. We don't, but that's another, that's a whole nother issue. The real issue is that we're really trying to accomplish our major goal. It's not that we don't like people. It's not that we don't want to be bothered with people. We just understand that while we get caught up in the moment of interacting with somebody that was unplanned, we get distracted and detoured and delayed from getting to where we believe God wants us to be. And when we get to the place we was trying to get to, 
the folks who slowed us down are going on about their business. And so we don't like interruptions. We get bothered with interruptions. But if you live long enough and you talk to God regular enough, you come to find out that some interruptions are divine interruptions. And divine interruptions, they are not delayed tactics. They are development pieces. They are divine opportunities that you have to make something work for that short period of time. And I've learned how to slow my behind down. I've learned how to stop in the middle of doing something, even though I know I can have trouble getting back on track. I've learned how to stop and slow down because God is sometimes trying to get my attention through these divine interruptions. And I often be praying as things be interrupting me, Lord, what are you saying here? Is this you? Because all interruptions don't come from God. No, all interruptions don't come from God. Some interruptions come from your own crazy head. Some thoughts you've been thinking and you trying to figure stuff out. And you got to understand when it's you and when it's God. But then it's sometimes not just you. Sometimes it is the evil one. Sometimes the devil himself in his strategic moments will plant people and plant things in your way to throw you off your game. The only reason why the devil bother you because you have something of value. You need to know that, that a thief don't break into a house unless there's something in the house of value. If you don't have nothing, ain't nobody bothering you. But when you have something or you're really on your way somewhere, then surely somebody going to try to stop you because there are haters you can see and haters you can't see. And then sometimes because the enemy is the enemy, he's the evil one. You know, he's not flesh and blood. That's why you be messing up because you be cussing people out and you be trying to fight with people when we don't fight against flesh and blood. It's another spirit at work there. And you got to learn how to speak to the spirit and not, you know, not get caught up in the person themselves. When Peter didn't agree with what Jesus had to say about him dying and resurrection, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. He spoke to the evil spirit, recognizing that Peter was still Peter. I say that to say that sometimes the devil used some folks real close to us to try to throw us off our game. Now, don't you go looking to the right or to the left. Don't you look at nobody you came here with. But the enemy will use anybody, anywhere, anytime to throw somebody else off. And they ain't even trying to be used. But they ain't trying to be demonic. They ain't trying to be low down. They just asking a question. Can I just ask a question? All I did was ask a question. I just asked a question. I mean, they give you that little play because that's what they're really doing. But they fail to realize or they don't know how the enemy is using them to throw you off your game. But while the enemy tries to throw us off our game and we get thrown off with our own game, we must recognize that sometimes God has a better plan. Sometimes God have more for you than what you think he has for you. In fact, all the time I've learned God's plans for you is better than your plans for you. And so you sometimes got to get used to these divine interruptions that God just kind of shows up. Jesus said that, that as I try to press toward this, this text, Jesus said that sometimes he disguises himself. He disguises himself as, as the homeless. He disguises himself as the naked. He disguises himself as the hungry. And, and he said that he would separate the sheep from the goat and the ones that was, come, that was sheep that was on his right-hand side. He said, I will bless you because I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was homeless and you took me in. He said, when did, you, when did we see you like that? He said, as you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. And Jesus disguises himself. God disguises himself. Because let's face it, who in here would not stop to give God a ride? If we saw God out there, who, who in here would not stop to give God some food if, if he had to sign and we knew it was really God? Who in here would not go out of their way to do some kind for him who has done amazing things for you if he, you had opportunity? 
Oh, anybody could be good in church. <laughs> anybody could not cuss in church. Anybody could wash up and get the smell off of them before they come to church. But the real evaluation of your relationship with God is how you act when you think God ain't around. Our text here in Matthew tells the story of the birth of this child. But before the birth of this child, it shows this routineness of life. That people are being born and they died and he begot and he begot. You read Matthew, it's all you got is he begot, he begot, he begot. Yeah, he begot. <laughs> That's the old King James Version. But it talks about one person being born, then another person being born, then another person being born. In fact, verse 17 talks about the 42 generations that were born before Jesus. And just go from one generation to another generation. And one of the things that gets us on our little bandwagon of trying to get something achieved is that when we think we have figured out the pattern of life, when we think we go, okay, I know how this going to work. You know, I got to get, get up. I got I to gotta wash my face. I got to fix me something to eat. I got to get clothed. I got to get out here at a certain time because I want to keep this job because I want to have some money. I want to be able to pay my bills. I want to be able to go on a trip from time to time. I want to make it look like I got more than what I got, you know, so I got to have at least a little something, something. We, we think we got this life figured out, and so we, we can't wait. We, we can't wait to get up and do it again, and if we're not careful, we get seduced into the routine of the, mon, of the mundane. We do the same old, same old, but God has a way in the midst of our routines, in the midst of our ritualistic, ritualistic religious practices, God has a way of interrupting us. God has a way of showing up in ways that's beyond our comprehension, and Christmas really is about God showing up. And God showing up at a time when we ain't really expecting him. So we expect Christmas to come every year, December 25th. But I want to share with you that Christmas come anytime God shows up. Whenever God's presence shows up, it, it's Christmas. God, God, God has interrupted and intervened in your situation, and you need to celebrate that. But we miss Christmas all too often because we miss some of the principles that I see in this text. And see, we had all this divine interruption of praise earlier. I don't have time to get deep into it. So I'm just going to jump right into it. How about that? <laughs> the text says, the text says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. It's talking about the, the coming of Jesus Christ. And he, he talks about how God intervened in the midst of all these previous verses of folks being born from one generation to another, these 42 generations that's being born. All of a sudden, it pauses and stops because this birth is different. This birth needs to be explained. This birth needs to be understood. This birth is not just your average birth. This birth is different. And every now and then, while you're going through life and while you think you got life all figured out, you got, got it how to figure out how to go to school and how to graduate, how to uh, research a job, how to get a new job, how to get a relationship, how to get out of a relationship, how to get a new relationship. You got this thing all figured out, how to have a kid, how to get him to pay for the kid, how to have more kids. You got this thing all figured out how to get this job done, how to move over to this job. You got all this stuff figured out. And while you're going through all these things figured out, God still has a plan for you. God has not forgotten you. God has a plan just for you. You are no accident. You are no coincidence. You are a part of God's divine plan. And so he has this way of interrupting us, and that's what happens in the text. And what I saw here in Matthew, uh, 20, Matthew 18 is how God showed up in the life of Joseph in a very peculiar way, a way that we need to be mindful of as we go forward in this Christmas season. And my prayer is that this Christmas season go far beyond December 25th. That this Christmas season go far beyond the new year, that we start to awaken to the fact that God every now and then will step in and interrupt and change our plans. And we have to learn how to handle that. Because if not, we can abort our, Christian, our, our Christmas. Mm. Here, here's what I saw. Here's what I saw about how God uh, shows up and, uh, and interrupted 
in this, in this scenario, Brother Davenport, that first of all, God showed up in an unexpected person. You see, we, we expect God to show up with some big halo and some big uh, a crown on his head. We expect God to show up with somebody with a deep voice, some anointing going on. We, we expect all those external things because that's what TV and that's what social media gives us to see. And sometimes God does show up like that. But let me tell you what you cannot do with God. You can never, ever afford to try to box God in. You can never, ever afford to tell yourself that God can only come one way because he's God almighty and he's God all by himself and he don't need anybody permission for him to come another way. I mean, he can come 15,000 times through that door and you keep looking for him to come through that door. Just because he came 15,000 times through that door don't mean that he won't come through that window when he want to. He comes. He came through an unexpected person. He came through an unexpected person. He chose a young virgin girl by the name of Mary, a nobody in the eyes of the world, a nobody in the eyes of the world, but obviously she was a star in the eyes of God. Never underestimate who God wants to use to bring forth new life, to bring forth new blessings. Sometimes we walk right past our blessing. We walk right past, why here you go. We walk right past our virgin Mary because we think they too young to tell us anything. They too young to bring anything new into my life. I've been around them, but you need to understand that God chooses babies just like he chooses old people. That you're never too young and you're never too old to be used by God. That when God chooses somebody, that's all it takes is for God's hand to be upon them. God qualifies who he chooses. He don't choose somebody who's qualified because none of us are qualified. Let's get that clear. Nobody is qualified. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us are messed up and jacked up. But when God chooses you, you become qualified. When God chooses you, he chooses to look beyond your faults and to see your need. When God chooses you, that's all it needs for God to use you. He chose this young virgin girl. He chose this young virgin girl and sent his angel to talk to her and tell her that she is with child. And, and he had to choose the right person because she submitted to him. See, God knows what he's doing when he chooses people. I don't even know why you be hating on people that God be choosing. Because, listen, God knows you, you, you don't know their story. You don't know where they came from. You don't know the pain. You don't know the problem that they've been through. And you don't know their future. You don't know what God got in store for them. In fact, your future might be dependent upon their future. And what we learn from Mary is that God sometimes chooses people that we think are unexpected to be used. And this is why my sisters and brothers who are believers who want to be disciples as you grow into being a disciple, you must learn to have a discerning spirit to be able to hear when God is talking to you. And you ought not to be following every voice that said the Lord told me to tell you. I got a pat answer for folks coming to me. The Lord told me to tell you. Well, First of all, if, it, if it's really from God, I have learned, it will ring in my spirit. I will sense that this is really from him. But if they try to tell me something I ain't never heard before, Lord told me, you my husband. Lord told me, you do this, you do that. I tell him, I said, this is what I want you to do for me, sweetheart. You go tell the Lord that I said, he knows my name, he knows my address, he got all my contacts, you tell him I said that if he want me to do that, tell him he know how to get a hold of me other than to have you to tell me. Because God know how to get a hold of you. But God will use other people. That's why you got to have a discerning spirit to know when God is talking and when the devil is talking or when it's just some fool talking. God, 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 God uses unexpected people. And, and I wish I had time to sit there because we often miss our blessings because God often chooses to bring our blessings through people. 
And he uses people sometimes that we don't like. He uses people sometimes that we don't think is qualified. Not, not to belittle us. When God chooses to use somebody that you don't think is qualified to bless you, qualified to lead you, qualified to help you, when God chooses those kind of people, what he's trying to show you is you too can be qualified. You, you too can be chosen. You too can be used by him. God is no respecter person. The story shows us that God chose and chooses his divine interruptions by choosing unexpected people. But he also do divine interruption by doing it in unexpected ways. <laughs> that he, he, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And he, he messes us up sometimes by the way he chooses to bless us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> the text talks about the Messiah. Je Jesus, the, the, the Messiah, uh, showing up. Uh, 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 now, the birth of Jesus was as follows. It, it, it talks about Jesus showing up as a baby. Not a strong soldier. Not a mighty warrior. But, but as a baby. He's the Messiah. He's the Savior. He's the one that's going to fix everything that's wrong with mankind. He's the one that's going to put unity back in the universe. He's the one that's going to unite a holy God with an unholy man. And God chooses to, not only to use an unexpected person, but to do it in an unexpected way. That he chooses to come by way of a baby. Small, fragile. Seen any babies lately? Fingers real, real small, toes real small, hands real tiny. A baby can't walk, don't have the muscles yet to walk, can't feed itself, got to depend on some. A baby that God chooses something real tiny, small to come into the world to change this big old world. You need to know that you can't, you can't box God and you can't tell God just because you done went some, somewhere and got you a little education. You went somewhere and got you some skill and some You can't tell God how to do his job. God comes however way he want to come. Sometimes God chooses the weak things to confound the, the mighty things, the foolish things to confound the wise. The things that are nothing, he chooses those things. To show the things that are something, they're nothing. So why? Call, call, so that no flesh can glory in his presence. And God chooses unexpected ways because when we do, we who will get into his presence. When we get into his presence, nobody will be able to brag about they got here because they were so good. But all glory. I wish somebody would say it would be all glory. Go, go to him. All glory go, go to him. He, he comes through an unexpected person and he comes in an unexpected way and he interrupts not only with unexpected person, an unexpected way, but he does it with an unexpected power. <laughs> through the power of his Holy Spirit. You see, God showed up in the Christmas scene with this unexpected power. This was not just any ordinary birth. This was, this was a divine conception. The Holy Spirit is at work. It's the only way Mary could get pregnant. In fact, she wondered how could she even be conceived with a child because she had not been with the man. It was amazing as I read this story. Why I love reading the Bible because the more you read it, you always get some insight. And this insight, I don't know, I'm slow sometimes. Maybe y'all got it, but I, I know the Bible said repeatedly, I've always, I preached this, how Mary was a virgin. But it don't say nothing about Joseph being a virgin. I'm 
I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, John, I'm just saying what I'm saying. It's just, it just, it didn't say that. It, it said that Mary was pure, but, 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 but Joe was not, and, but, but one thing, Joe, he, whether he was or was not a virgin, Joe had not been with Mary. And Mary had found out that she was pregnant. How could this be? The only way it could be is through the power of the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that was in the beginning that hovered over the waters. And when the word of God said, let there be, the same spirit made it so. The same spirit that was wars and cooled them off in a hot furnace. The same spirit that was with the lions and kept them still asleep while Daniel was laid in there. The same spirit that divided the Red Sea and let the children of Israel walk by on dry ground and then release the waters and made Pharaoh and his army drown. The same spirit that was with Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones. When the bones came together, allowed those bones to come back to life and become the army of Israel. That same divine Holy Spirit got a hold of Mary. And that same Holy Spirit can get a hold of you. If you allow God to step into your life and interrupt you every now and then, you will find some Christmases showing up in your life. You're not too small. You're not too young. You're not too old. You're not too anything that God can't use you. You may have too small of a mind and you need to expand your mind to let God do what he wants to do his way in your life. That birth might come forth. That life might come forth. Deliverance might come forth. How? By the Holy Spirit. By God's Holy Spirit. That spirit that can do anything but fail. That divine Holy Spirit. That spirit that gives you joy when you don't have nothing to be happy about. That same Holy Spirit that heals what medicine cannot heal. You need the Holy Spirit. These divine interruptions come from God to people who are willing to be used like Mary. To people who are open to new ways of God showing up. To people who are not afraid, who are not scared and who will yield to the Holy Spirit of God and say, God, use me. God, I'm your servant. I come to serve you for real, for real. God, use me. And stop trying to tell God how to do it. Just let God use you. Just, just, let, God, just let God use you. God, God has been showing up for so many people for so long a time that, that we ought not to be surprised when God shows up Many have been without money but and would have lost their mind, but God showed up. Many been without love and thought they were going to lose their mind, but God showed up. Many have been sick and the medicine didn't work, but God showed up. Many have been wrong, should have been locked up or boxed up, but God showed up. Christmas is all about God showing up. So I come to encourage you to hold on to your faith. I come to encourage you to stop getting so off track, stop getting so messed up when folks interrupt you. You got to allow some divine interruptions in your life because God can do some things far better than you. But while God is working on you, and I got the clothes, but while God is working on you, you got to remember some things. Deacon Adams, this is what, this is what uh, uh, Russell told me the other day. Time is filled with swift transitions. Not on earth unmoved can stand, but build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. I said you got to hold to God's unchanging hand. 
You got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. When you're going through tough times, hold to God's unchanging hands. When you're going through dark times, hold to God's unchanging hands. When you're going through times that's troubling your soul, hold to God's unchanging hand. I'm here to tell you that if you hold on to God, God got you. I say God got you. And God will bring you through. I know he will. He will bring you through. I heard somebody else say, you can't hurry God. You just got to wait. You got to trust him and give him time. No matter how long it takes, he's a God that you can't hurry. But he will be there. Don't you worry. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. I heard Mother Roundtree say it like this. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. And even when you get interrupted, even when you get thrown off your game, I dare you just to walk with God. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He'll make a way for you. Yes, he will. He'll deliver you. Yes, he will. He'll put food on the table. Yes, he will. He will heal you. Yes, he will. He'll reconcile it. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. As you go through the Christmas season, you're going to plan parties and dinners and get-togethers as well you should. And some things going to go just the way you want them. And some things going to go absolutely not. That's life. But you got to be sensitive to what God is in the midst of all of that. Because you're a child of God. And wherever you are, that's what God is. And so you got to ask God, what do you want me to get out of this? God, what are you trying to tell me in this? If you ask God, God will show you. Because God is in mess. He's not the author of confusion, but God is in mess. Because all mess is, Terry, mess <laughs> is just mess without age. It needs some time on it. But when you put mess with age, you get a message. You'll get that on the way home. That you don't get your message until mess has some age on it. And then you look back and you realize that God was up to something all along. Now, for some who just showed up today, here's your divine interruption. You, you came just for regular old church service. You just wanted a song and a sermon. But you got to admit, it's been hot up in here today. You got to admit... And God met you in your seat, and one of those songs really grabbed you. You got to admit that you had a real revelation of what God's trying to do with you. You got to admit that, that perhaps what you've been struggling with as an interruption is probably God's divine appointment for you. And if you can accept the appointment, you'll find peace comes with it. That your loss of peace or 